of myself, my word for God is on you, Lord Jesus. My worship is to you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I worship you. My King, my Savior, I honor you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus, my King and my Savior. Hallelujah. <laughs> you ever been to those, those venues, I'll say, those venues that, uh, maybe not all of y'all, but been to these conferences and it's all about who you know, who you know, what you know. <laughs> Amen. Oh, today, I don't know much, but I know who I put my faith and my trust in. I know my Savior. Amen. And He is worthy of all glory and honor. Come on. He is worthy of all praise. I love you, Lord. I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful to be here. Of course, as always, I am honored to be your pastor. I'm so thankful to be surrounded by such beautiful people. Even the uglier, the ugly among us are beautiful. Praise the Lord. It's awesome. Sorry, but uh, it is it is honest. Uh, just being honest, uh, I love you. I'm thankful you're here, and I tell you the the music and the praise and worship were just off the chain, as they used to say. They don't say it anymore. Y'all did awesome. Thank you, and I honor you. I want to want to say it's good to have our guest with us. We've got a uh, guest from uh, other places, and I, I don't want to get into all the name calling, but I am honored to have you here. Um, and uh, it's an, it's uh, we are blessed by you being here. But what what we do here, and what we have have done in the last 20, 30 minutes, is is we have worshipped the Lord with song. We have worshipped uh, in our giving, and we have worshipped just with our attention. But today, the all of that was honest. I know it sounds a little bit transparent, but all of that was to kind of get us prepared to receive the word. It'd be kind of like when you go to a dentist and they give you a little shot right there to do the teeth work. <laughs> you know, they're just getting you ready. Today, what, what all of this has done is gotten us ready to the point to where we can receive his word. And I am thankful today to, uh, as was uh, stated earlier, to have Matt and uh, Kate Newton here. They've been here with us several times before and we're so thankful. Thankful for their ministry, thankful for their, uh, their faith, thankful for their kindness. Uh, their attitude. I just, if you've not met them yet, you meet them. You need to meet them. They just got a good attitude. Not as good as mine, but pretty good. Amen. But uh, I'm, I'm playing, of course. But uh, I'm thankful, and I feel the power of God here, and I don't want to. I don't want to quench that. So I want to ask Him to come. Uh, we're going to give Him this uh, microphone, this platform, and, but I want you to just give Him your attention to where you can hear the voice of God as it speaks to you. Let's give God glory and honor as He comes in Jesus' name. your own way in your own words i wonder if you can just begin to worship god without any music without any words on a screen without anybody prompting you without anybody pushing you we can just begin to entertain his presence his his presence is here faith is here faith is in the house father we love you lord we thank you jesus there is nothing that you cannot do, God. There is no mountain too great. There is no need too small or too big. But Father, I've come to give you praise. Lord, I've come to give you worship. Lord, I've come to give you my very best this morning. And we give you praise, God. We give you honor, Lord. We worship you today, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Now clap your hands if you believe it. And clap your hands as a sign of a response unto him. Say, God, have your divine way in my life today. God, change my life today. God, change my mind today. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Well, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be in College Station with each and every one of you again today. So it is my privilege to, to be able to stand 
where your great pastor and your pastoral staff stands and, and to convey the word of God to you this morning. Amen. I wonder if you can turn around and greet two people and just say, man, you look better than I do. You look better than I. Oh, man, it got loud in here. Whoa. It got loud in here. You look better than I. If you're single, that was your chance, you know. If you're looking for somebody to, to go to lunch with, I just gave you an opportunity. I want to turn your attention quickly to the word of the Lord. You know, often a preacher will stand up here and he'll say or she'll say, you know, I, man, I got a word from the Lord for you today. Well, and then, of course, you're going to say, well, yeah, I, I hope. I mean, uh, that's what you're there to do. But today I just want to bring to you what the word of the Lord is for you and for your life and for this church and this church community. I believe that God has given me something for each and every one of us here and something that is going to propel us to the next place. Uh, if, you, if we can just glean something from today, if we can yeah. glean the, the meat of today, and maybe you might not remember everything I say, but if there's something that you can remember today, and God is going to allow that seed to come inside of you and germinate and bring forth fruit Amen. so it will change your life today. It will change how you operate, how you think. It will change your lifestyle. It will change how you conduct business, and it will change this church and this church community and the community around us. Amen. Amen. I believe that God is going to do a great work in our midst. Amen. And I'm going to turn your attention to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to begin reading in verse 12. And Paul writes, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, great King James English, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14 says, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call or the high call in God, in Christ Jesus. With the help of the Lord and with the help of his spirit leading and guiding me, I want to speak to you with this title in mind, with this thought in mind, the danger of settling for false peaks. The danger of settling for false peaks. You may be seated this morning. And let's go on a journey. Who wants to go on a trip with me? Let's go. Let's go on a journey today. And, and you know, it's nice, it's pretty, it's cold, the weather has changed. And if you know anything about Texas, it changed like 40 degrees in 10 minutes. Yeah. And we're going to go to the mountains. Oh, man, doesn't that sound, that sounds refreshing. That sounds nice. Let's go to the mountains together. In July 20th, 1919, on the outer rim of the British Empire, there was a man, Edwin Percival Hillary. He was born in Auckland, New Zealand. And his upbringing, the life that he lived, was pretty normal. It, he, he wasn't very... He wasn't the most athletic kid. He, he was just kind of a, from an average family. He wasn't the smartest. He wasn't the tallest. His life was, for all intents and purposes, was rather normal. And Edmund, from outsiders looking in, technically, Edmund was not destined for greatness at all. And at the age of 16, on a school trip to Mount Repeu, he was exposed to something that caught his attention. He was exposed to mountaineering. And Edmund began to notice, he noticed 
outside of everybody around him, he noticed that he had some endurance that maybe was greater than the others around him. So he began to build on that and look into that and, and exercise this, this gifting of endurance. In 1939, at the age of 20, he successfully peaked Mount Oliver. It was his first major climb. He had the stamina and the endurance. Although he wasn't diff uh, special, although he wasn't, you, you know, somebody that was outstanding, he determined that I can press harder and faster than somebody else. That was his first major climb. And from that climb, from that endeavor, from that step in his life, he was off. He was hooked. He was hooked on the thrill and the excitement. He was hooked on the thrill and the excitement of simple accomplishment. I set a goal and I completed that goal. In 1948, he peaked the highest peak in New Zealand, Mount Cook. And the very next year in 1949, he traveled to Switzerland to climb the Alps. In 1951, he traveled to the Himalayas for his very first expedition. And after two years of preparation, two years of training, two years of, of practice, two years of, of, of gathering and broadening his skill set, Edmund Hillary scaled 11 of the Himalayan peaks, each of them over 20,000 feet. And on May 20th, or May 29th, 1953, at about 11.30 a.m., Sir Edmund Percival Hillary reached the summit of Mount Everest at, at 29,028 feet, the highest peak on earth. So in this journey today, in this journey this morning, let's also... Go with me to the great state of Colorado. Colorado is a state for adventure. You, there's, there's nothing that you cannot do. Literally, if, if you're an adventurous person in the state of Colorado, there's hiking, there's backpacking, whitewater rafting, climbing, cycling, running. If there's an outdoor activity, well, it can be done. Maybe the, the best place, the best state in our continental United States, maybe it might be the best place in Colorado. And of course, that's not to diminish my pride in Texas. You know, let's be very careful here. You know, we're all very prideful of the great state, the largest state, the best state, you know. All right. We love Texas. All right. Yeah. Woohoo. Go Texas. All right. But one of the main reasons that I love Colorado is the mountains. I like to go and see them, their majestic beauty. And uh, famously, the naturalist and adventurer John Muir, he penned, the mountains are calling and, and I must go. Wow, how many can relate to that? The mountains are indeed calling and I must go. And me personally, I like to go and I like to hike and I like to climb 14ers is what they call 14,000 foot mountains. And to date, to, today on this beautiful day in November, I, of course, I've not climbed them all because there's a lot. But I've peaked about 11 14ers, 11 14ers. And, and I've also climbed the highest one that is in the state of Colorado, Mount Elbert, which is 14,000 400 or 300 feet, something like that. I've peaked that one. That's the second highest peak in the continental United States. Of course, once you get to Alaska, everything's higher, you know. Colorado has 58 14ers. So along this journey, along this list, there's some of them that I probably will never peak because you have to start getting really technical and all this type of stuff. You know, I just want to, I just want to use my feet. I just want to use my hands, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to start using ropes and harnesses and helmets and, you know, then I don't have time for that. But, but there's by far more peaks, more 14ers than any state. 
And a 14er is a 14,000 foot mountain. It's kind of like a, a point of declaration. It's, it's a point of, of notoriety. It is anything that reaches 14,000 feet in elevation or higher. And so you're trying to figure out, well, how high is that? It sounds high. Well, Denver is the mile high city at 5,280, if you remember your third grade math. Uh, Houston, for example, is about 80 feet at its highest, and downtown Houston is like literally 50 feet. Here in College Station, according to College Station, it's uh, the website, it's like 340 feet. And, and according to the altimeter on my phone here at Victory, we're about 260 feet. Yep. So 14,000 feet is pretty high. Yep. It's high to say the least. And then let's go back to the scripture that we read today in our scripture we read in Philippians. And it said that we, you and I, we are called to press to a higher calling and a higher ability than we might have. How? In Christ Jesus. It is not something that we naturally have. It is not something that we naturally can do. It is not anything that we naturally can attain. It is not anything or an ability that makes us special, but it is in Christ Jesus that we have a supernatural ability and a calling to press forward and press onward and go higher than those around us may think that we have the ability to do. We have the ability to go beyond what others may see us as our peak in life. Why? Because Jesus says we have the ability to... because. For an upward call, a high calling in Christ Jesus. Point to yourself this morning. I am being called. I am being called. Point to somebody else. Say, you are being called. Yes, yes, you are being called. Don't forget it this morning. There is so much more that you and I have forward to, uh, have the ability to break into. We have more to look forward to in life. Why? Because Jesus said, I am calling you to greater heights. I am calling you to a new place. I am calling you to advance way more than you think. The news media tries to fill us full of all kinds of negative content. Cancel culture attempts to rewrite history around us. The woke nation really resembles a broke nation. But we as the church, we as the people of the living God, we as the people of a great nation, a royal priesthood, a chosen people, we have the ability as the church for so much more. We have so much more available to us. We have so much more that, that God is calling us to. And we collectively must press, not individually you climbing alone, but we collectively must press. We collectively must move forward. We are or should be like a rising army in battle, marching to victory, marching step in step, ready, ready to advance the kingdom of God, ready to move the front forward. Come on. We collectively press as a unified body of believers, yeah. not sowing discord, not, not, not gossiping, yeah. not, yeah. not being judgmental, but as a unified body of believers yeah. in, in like mindedness and in, in one accord, moving a movement that continues to rise. Right. We press toward, we press toward, we press upward for a prize. Of an eternal calling, an everlasting calling, a supernatural help that allows us to advance. The church, you and I, we are selected. We are separated. We're called out. We're selected for a great calling of God to advance his kingdom. 
And I'm here to tell somebody in case you have forgotten, there is a purpose and a plan specific for your life in the kingdom of God. I don't know if you really believe that yourself because you're looking at me like I'm a turnip, but there is a purpose and a plan for your life specific in the kingdom of God. I want you to believe and understand it this morning. I want you to really get it in, back into your spirit or maybe into your spirit for the first time. I, I want you to get it into your mind that I am called. I am separated. I have the ability to go forward. I have the ability to advance the kingdom of God. I want somebody to hear this preacher this morning. You have not missed it. You have not missed your moment in time. You have not missed the moment that God has called you. You have not missed. You have not peaked. But rather it is time for you to begin to walk. It is time for you to begin to move. It is time for you to begin to press. It is time for you to begin to advance. All it takes is a step. A step forward. A step onward. A step upward. Now is your time. Now is your time. It's time for you to hike. It's time for you to climb. It's time for you to press on. So let's talk about false peaks. As you climb and as you ascend up the mountain, these mountainous adventures a lot of times takes a lot of preparation, takes some training, takes some very practical things, some practical measures. You know, you might need to be running. Uh, you, you need to be working on your lung capacity. You need to make sure you got the right shoes. And you no. Make sure that you're going to be able to maintain hydration. Make sure that you have enough fuel in you. You know, this isn't just some little old hike in the woods. This, the, you know, the, it, it's rocky up there. There's, there's no vegetation the higher you go. There's no water the higher you go. You know, you know, we preach a lot about the mountaintop, but guess what? Nothing grows on the mountaintop. You know, we, we demoralize the valley, but guess what? In the valley, there's richness. In the valley is where there's fruit. In the valley is where there's life. In the valley is where there's water. But it's rocky. You're going to lose your footing. There's nothing to eat. There's nothing to drink. You, you have to be totally self-sufficient. The air is thinner. You can't breathe. Your gear and your supplies are necessary. You have to make sure that it's recorded. You have to make sure that you know where you're at. You have to make sure that you're on the right trail. You're on, you're on the right path. This climb is more than a physical ascent. But guess what? It's also a mental battle. It's very taxing mentally. Especially if this is the first time you've climbed. Or if this is the first time you've gotten this high. If this is the, the first time that you've taken on an adventure like this. This might be the first time that you've, you might have, you might have climbed something that you thought was hard at that time, but this time, this is a new mountain. This is a, this is a new height. This is a greater height than you are unsure of what this new experience is going to be. There's a mental struggle as you summit these beautiful mountains. There's there's typically a, a series of what looks like the end. It's like, oh man, if I could just get there. I'm tired. I'm worn out. Uh, my legs are tired. I can't breathe. I, don't, I didn't train hard enough. You start second guessing yourself. I didn't train hard enough. I, I didn't do enough. I should have ran more. I should have. If I could just get there. If I could just get there. And then as you push towards the top, you realize, oh man, this... This isn't the top. and This is just a false peak. This is just a false summit. And, and I've got way more to go. This, 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 that clearly is not the top. And when you get there, I've got a lot more to go. You'll be hiking and you'll be climbing. Your, your foot will just, it'll just be mechanical sometimes. I got to go. I got I to gotta get to church. Uh, I got to pray. I, I, I'm just reading my Bible. It seems a little mechanical. It, it seems like you know, some of your disciplines, but, but you know, your training, uh, uh, the, the things that you've been you know, advancing for, your calling, your purpose, uh, the spiritual help that comes behind you. 
You'll be fatigue often sets in. You're hiking for what literally seems all day, and sometimes it does take all day. And, you, and then you're hoping to get to the soft top, and, you, and you're hoping to get to what seems to be the top. And you think, if I could just get there. If I can get there, I've made it. Man, I, I will have arrived. If, if I can just get, if I can just teach that one Bible study, well, man, that is going to be where I arrived. You know, if I can just get up on that platform a couple times and, and I will know that I have arrived. You know, you know, when I get that call to be that special preacher somewhere, that special minister somewhere, I know that I will have arrived. And when you get to that place, when you teach that class, when you start that group, when you, when you start that circle, it, you realize, you know, this ain't all cracked up to what I thought it was going to be. It's just a false summit. It's just a false peak. And there's a danger. There's a danger. Hear me, Victory. There's a danger in settling for false peaks in your life. All too often, we seemingly cut the pursuit, the pursuit of the things of God too short. We cut short and we place limitations upon ourselves. All right, this, this is about all that I can do. You know, I've done more than my parents. I, I, I've done greater than my mom or my dad. Uh, you know, I mean, I've done a whole lot better than anybody in my youth group ever did. I've done a whole lot better than my family. You know, my family, man, they were raised on the same pew as I was. And, and look at me, I'm still here. I've done a whole lot better than them. But yet we place limitations upon ourselves. Well, this is about all that I could do. You know, I've done good, right? You know, this is nice. I'm comfortable. You know, the way that we think about ourselves is a very powerful thing. Yes, it is. That's right. Come on. The way that you personally perceive yourself when you stand in that mirror with bags under your eyes, brushing your dirty teeth in the morning. Yeah, we're all there, you know. The way that you think about yourself is a powerful thing. And you think about... How, you know, there's good things. I, I can do this well. or I, uh, there's, there's good things too. And of course, there's also things that you really stink at, right? If you're not very athletic or, you know, I don't know how to do electrical work. Or, you know, I, I'm just not a very good speaker. Or, you, you know, there's so many things. And we all have those things, each and every one of us. Why? Well... Because we're human. <laughs> because we're flawed, right? You know, I, I, I'm athletic or, or maybe I'm not very athletic. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not so smart. I'm not good at math. Uh, uh, I just don't know how to budget. Uh, I'm, I'm not very pretty or I'm not, or maybe I'm super pretty, right? As false and as damaging as that way of thinking is, we all allow too often our minds to govern our growth. We allow our minds and our perception to govern what God truly has in store for our lives. The same being in the church and in the kingdom of God. I can't do this. I can't do that. I only do this and I only do that. Or I don't do this and I don't do that. But this is what I do in the kingdom of God. All too often, our perception defines our reality. Yep, yep. Who we think we are defines and makes us up who we are. What we need, what is needed, is an adoption of the way that God sees us. Uh, yeah. What you need in your mind is a spiritual adoption of the what God sees in you. Not what you see in yourself. Not what others see in you. But how God sees you through the spirit of adoption. He said, I want you. He said, I want you in my kingdom. Not because what you think you have. But I see something in you that nobody else sees. I see something in you that I can use in my kingdom. 
kingdom. I see something in you that nobody else sees, but I see it. It's not your perception, but it's God's reality. It's not your stinking thinking, but it's he, the way that he thinks about you. Paul wrote, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. God wants to change the way that you think about yourself. He wants to change the way that you perceive that you are. He wants to change your mind. He wants to alter your habits. He wants to renew your spirit. He wants you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Why? Not because it's hard, but because it is reasonable. And let your mind be transformed in him. Let your mind be transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. All too often we look at ourselves and say, I can't do it. I can't do it. But let your mind be changed. Let your spirit be altered. Be transformed. Be transformed. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. We need to take the limits off of God this morning. You need to take the limits off of your mind this morning. You need to take the limits off of your spirit this morning. You need to take the limits off of your your, your perception this morning. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. There is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing that he cannot do. I wish I knew some spirit-filled believers around here that said there is nothing that he cannot do. There's no great, there's no need too small. There's no need too great. There's no perception uh, of myself that he can't change. You're like, yeah, I believe God can do a miracle. Sure, but, you know, I just don't know if he can change my mind. And you might not be saying it, but you're saying it. Your response this morning is telling me you're saying it. You know, I believe that he can heal pastors fourth. What was that thing? Yeah, his wrist, but he was saying that he had four something, ankles, there it is. I believe that. That's awesome. That's a great miracle. Yeah. But to change my mind. Come on, uh, I've already come out of darkness into this marvelous light. No, no, no. I'm not talking about your salvation. No, I'm not talking about you living a righteous and peaceable life with all godliness and modesty. No, I'm talking about you changing your mind and let his mind be in you. There is more that God is calling us to. There is more that God is calling you to. There is more that God is calling this church to be in this community. If we will just change our mind. If we will just have his mind be in us. If we will allow true transformation to come. If we will allow true life to come. Being full of his spirit and being baptized in the name of Jesus and, and, and receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Those are fundamental. Those are fundamental things. But there's more. There's more. There's more. And God does not want you to stay the same. He wants to change every aspect of you. He wants to change, oh, dare I say, he wants to change even your personalities. Oh, you know, I just don't worship like that. Well, guess what, baby? My dad, I grew up in a house where my dad, you know, he would come to church a couple times a year. And he might even be watching, and that's cool. He would only come to church a couple times a year. And, and, you know, I thought... Well, you know, my dad, when he gets the Holy Ghost and he's baptized in Jesus' name, he's probably just going to be one of those guys that just like sits around and, you know, does this. And, you know, he's, he's a very reserved man. 
But I guarantee, I guarantee you this morning, at 73, almost 74 years old, he was baptized in 2015. He's going to be right up there at the altar at the strike of the first chord. Why? Because the Holy Ghost got into him. He allowed God to change his mind, change his doctrine, change his spirits. And he's a worshiper. Oh, God doesn't want you to change, stay the same. And you're like, man, I got, I got things I got to do. No, he wants to change the way that you think about yourself. He wants to change your mannerisms. He wants to change the way you speak. He wants to change the way you think. We are not defined by others. We are not defined by ourselves. We are not defined by the world. But we are not conformed to this world. But we are transformed. And it starts in our minds. We don't fit in. And guess what? That's okay. I don't know about you, but last time I went to the mall, I don't fit in. And that's okay. Last time I went to Walmart, I don't fit in. And that's okay. We've got a work to do. I've been changed. I don't think the way that I used to think. I don't act the way that I used to think. Woo! God doesn't want you to stay the same. He doesn't want to just leave you the same way that you came to the altar. He doesn't want to just leave you the same way that you are this morning. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell somebody. I'm here to, I'm here to speak life and I'm here to speak the spirit of God over you. I'm telling you, change is coming. I'm telling you, change is coming. The winds of change are blowing through this sanctuary. The winds of change are blowing through this area. The winds of change are blowing through this church. The winds of change are blowing through the lives and the minds of his people. And he wants you to make sure that you're you're changed. He wants to make sure that you are transformed. Bob Dylan said times are changing. Times are changing, and, and don't we know that times are changing? But I'm here to tell you that the Holy Ghost is saying this morning, the Holy Ghost is saying that I, I'm here to tell you that minds are changing. I'm here to tell you that minds are changing. There is more that God has planned for your life. There is more that God has planned for this church. There is more that God has planned for this Brazos Valley. There is more. And he's saying, come on. Come on, I'm urging you. I'm pressing you. I'm pressing you to a higher calling. I'm pressing you to move on. I'm pressing you to move upward. I'm pressing you to advance. Often we allow complacency to thwart our growth. We allow complacency to set in. This is good enough. Man, there's enough people in here. How much more do we need? How, how, what else? Look at, I'm fine. Like, man, if it was any bigger, I'd have to go to another place. If it was any bigger, you know, the pastor wouldn't call me as often. We limit, we limit, we limit. We limit the power of the God creator. We limit the power of the God that spoke life into existence. We limit the almighty power of the almighty God. For with God, all things are possible. For with God, all things are possible. But the scripture doesn't stop there. To him do that belief. To him, do that belief. Uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know. If I, I, I haven't seen it, you know. Sure, you say Sir Edmund Hillary did Everest, but I wasn't there, you know. Sure, you say the world is round, but I've never, I've never been in space, you know. We press on, we press on, we push, we push, we keep moving. 
I'm here to tell somebody, don't settle for the place that you are in right now. Don't settle for the place that you are in right now. This is not it. Look around. This is not it. You have not arrived. This is not the best that you could do. This is not the greatest that you can do. This is not the highest that you can climb. There is more. And you're being called for more. You're being pressed for more. You're being asked to do more. You're being pressed and called to move upward. Don't settle for the place that you're in. Don't settle for, for this level that you're at now. This, this is not the mountaintop. This is not the end. But we keep pressing. We keep moving. You may be tired. You may be, you, you may be a little mechanical right now. You, you may be a little bit overwhelmed right now. But, but this is not a time to slow down. Just because the holidays are up and, and just because we have parties that are being planned. This is not the time. Don't be confused now. Don't, don't let culture move in into your thinking now. This is not the end. And this is not the final peak. This is not... The top. Your weeping may endure for the night, but I'm here to tell you joy is coming in the morning. Where, where your thinking is right now may be the top, but guess what? Keep pressing, keep fighting. Change is coming to your mind in the morning. You may be fighting right now. You may be fighting, but this is the night. There's a victory that's happening in the morning. There's a victory in your mind that is happening in the morning. Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody this morning that you have not peaked. I've come to tell the church the victory that you have not peaked. I've come to tell the church of Brazos Valley that you have not peaked. I've come to tell the spirit-filled believers that are in this area, that are in this region, this is not the top. This is not the end. This is not the highest that you will go. There is still yet a mountaintop. There are still other peaks. There are still other things that you need to climb. This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Do, do not, do not limit yourself. Do not limit yourself. Get that stinking thinking out of your mind. Get that human, Adamic, fleshly, carnal nature out of your mind and let Christ's mind be formed in you. For with him, if I believe, all things are possible. But if I don't believe, nothing is impossible. Come on, you got to get it in your mind. You got to get it into your spirit. Why? Because there's a danger in settling for false peaks. This is the end. This is good enough. I've reached it. I'm tired. And I'm just going to turn around and go back down. Don't help me. In the pursuit of God... And the pursuit of the things of God, each and every one of us, there are things that we're going to have to give up to go a little higher. You know, you can't take everything with you to the top. Your house and all of your things and all of where you live and where you abide and, and where you make your bed, that's all down in the valley. That, that's all down low. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there's some things that you're going to have to give up right. to go to the top. Oh, yeah. The higher you climb, the further that you ascend, the farther that you're able to go to the top. The less you're going to be able to carry with you. The mountaineer is consistently weighing his options. 
consistency, consistently looking at his gear, looking at what he has. Is this light enough? Will this do? Will I need this? What purpose does this serve? Why am I doing it this way when I could be doing it this way? The Bible tells us to lay aside every weight that is hindering us to go to that next level. Lay aside every weight that is not allowing us to see the mountaintop. Hebrews 12 says, lay aside every weight and sin that entraps us and snares us. Why? So we can run with what? Endurance. We can run with endurance of the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. With Him leading us, with Him guiding us. Not by perception, not by my own flesh, not by my own desires, but Him leading us. In order for you to make the climb, in order for you to go where God wants you to go, in order for you to make that heavenly ascent upward, you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to have to let some things go. You're going to have to let some things of the past go. You're going to have to let some, some worries of the past go. You're going, to, you're going to have to let some worries of the present go. You're going to have to let the worries about your future go. You're going to have to let hurts go. You're going to have to let some hang-ups go. You're going to have to let your perception about yourself change and alter. You're going to have to let your mind be transformed. You're going to have to let your habits change, your habits alter. What The, the way that you currently conduct business, the way that you currently walk life is going to have to change. Why? Because God is pressing God is pressing. He is calling you. He's saying, come up a little higher. Come up a little higher. Come up a little higher. You may have everything that you think you need. You may have everything that you think you need. But when you begin to advance, when you begin to climb, it gets a little taxing. It gets a little hard. And some next steps may be hard for you to climb and may be hard for you to move and hard for you to advance. And and it gets a little tough and you're not really sure. Well, you need to go back to what you're carrying. Say, what is all this junk in here? Man, I don't need this. I don't need that. Yeah, it might, you know, it, it might be useful. It might be useful, but in order to go to that next level... You're not going to need it. You know, man, this, I've had this thing for a long time. I've, I've had this thing for me. This has gotten me to where I'm at. But in order to go to that next spot, in order to go a little higher, in order to go to the place that God is calling you to, in order to go to that next place where he is pressing you to, You're going to have to let some things go. You're going to have to let some things go. There are, there are some weights and some, some things that you think that you need. There are some things that you keep on holding on to, but you're going to have to let them go. God is saying, why are you carrying this still? Why are you carrying this still? I've already forgiven you of that, but yet, but yet you're still holding on. Yet it's still dragging you down. It's still weighing you down, but I want you to drop it. I want you to go higher than you've ever been before. That step, that peak is not the end. It is merely a false peak. It's merely a false summit. You have not arrived. And I'm here to tell the church. I'm here to tell victory. I'm here to tell every spirit-filled believer in this Brazos Valley. This is not the end. This is not it. We have more to do. What burden are you carrying that God did not supply? What burden are you carrying that God has already forgiven you? What problem are you still trying to hold on to? What he's saying, let it go. What hurt? What what hang up? What, What strife? What situation? What perception 
Are you still holding on to? What situation, what insecurity are you still holding on to? What are you carrying right now that God is not intending for you to carry? What are you carrying right now that God is not intending for you to carry because he's pressing you? He's pushing you to climb. He's pushing you to go higher. What used to be necessary may no longer be necessary. What used to be a really good thing may no longer be a really good thing. Now, clearly, I'm not referring to biblical truth. But there are some things, there are some, some functions, there are, there are some systems that we no longer need. If God is pressing us to go forward, you may have to let some things go to go to that place. Of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. Do not settle for where you are at. But no. We let some things go. We let some things go. We just. We don't need them anymore. Why? Because I've got purpose. I've got. He's pressing me. He's pressing me to move. He's pressing me to advance. He's pressing me. He's pushing me. He's pushing me. He's pushing you. Come on, is there anybody that can feel this in their spirit? Is there anybody that feels the spirit of God working in them? No, he's pushing me. He's pushing me. I've got to give up some things. I've got to give up some things. Why? Because he's got more for me. We need to lay aside the weights of the world. There's some shows that you're watching that you don't need to be watching. There's some things that you're listening to that you don't need to be listening to. There's some spirits that you're entertaining that you don't need to be entertaining. There's relationships and and entertainment that you don't need to be entertaining. Pop culture, you have too much idle time. The danger of thinking that you have arrived at the top. The danger of thinking that you are finished. The danger of stopping before you really peak. The danger of settling for false peaks without actually going to the top is that others are going to keep climbing. And they're going to pass you by. It's like, I've gone far enough. This is good enough. This is, this is fine. I'm comfortable. I, I really wasn't designed to go to the top. You know, that's, that's for them. God bless them, you know. You know, let, let, let them go ahead and go on up, you know. I'll be fine. I'll just head back to the house. I'm hungry, I'm tired, my legs hurt, got some knee pain. But others are going to pass this by. Right? We are a church in the 11th hour of a mighty harvest and outpouring of his spirit. And we might have been working for those 11 hours or maybe only some of us three or six. But there will be and shall be somebody that walks in in the 11th hour and only puts in what we deem one hour's worth of work. Go read the parable. And the same talent the same blessing, the same favor will be upon them than those that we know what we're doing. I've plowed this field for days and 11 hours and now he, I got, I don't have time. God is looking. He's looking. Who? Who? Who is hearing my unction? Who is is feeling my pressing. Who is allowing their mind to be changed? You think that you have arrived. We think that we have arrived with all of our stuff. With all of our things. With, with everything that we're carrying. And we've made a climb up to this point. We've gotten high. The city's way below. The people are way below. We've done some really great things. But if we settle, 
If we settle for this false peak, the church of the living God will continue to go and to grow. And we will remain happy, content, and never made it to the top. Never made it to the top. You can stand with me this morning. I can use a piano. That's about it. I'm here to tell, I'm here to tell each and every one of you. I'm here on authority of the Holy Ghost and on authority of the Spirit of God. I am 100% under the authority of your pastor and your pastoral staff. Whatever I say, it can be null and void upon their word. But I'm here to tell you, it's time to arise to a calling. It's time to arise to a place that he is pressing and pushing you to. It's time to climb higher than we've climbed before. It's time to move on. And it's time to move up. It's time to move upward. This church is on the move. The church of the living God is on the move. Do not stay where you are at. Do not get comfortable. Do not get complacent. This is not the top. This is not the mountain top. You think you may have arrived, but listen very closely. Listen very closely. This is not the highest that you can ascend. This is not the highest that you can ascend. This is not the highest that Victory Church will go. This is not the largest that Victory Church will be. This is not the nicest that Victory Church will be. This is not the highest that your leadership team will be. This is not the greatest that your leadership team will function. This is not the greatest of gifts of administration that they will operate in. But no, we have more to accomplish. We have higher heights to go. This is not the greatest that your pastor will preach. This is not the greatest series that he'll ever teach. No, but I'm here to tell you, we have more to do. The greatest things are still ahead. This might be high, but this is not the highest that we have the ability to go. Hear me, sir. Hear me, ma'am. Hear me, youth. Hear me, young adults. This is not the greatest that you will be. This is not the highest that you can climb. No, there is more that God is calling you to. This is not the highest. This is not the greatest. I'm here to tell you that there are more souls for you to save. There is a greater harvest for you to reap. There are bigger buildings to build. There is greater buildings to renovate. There are greater spaces to renovate. There is more work to do. I'm here to tell somebody that this is not the greatest miracle that you are ever going to see. But there are greater giftings and greater spiritual giftings that will work and shall work in this place. You're going to see greater. You're going to go higher. You're going to do more. You're going to reach more peaks. Why? Because he's pressing. He's pressing. This is not the most organized that you can get. This is not the greatest gift of administration that you have. There's more that God has at your disposal. The greatest sermon has yet to be preached in this building and in this city. The greatest series has yet to be taught in this building and in this city. The greatest department has yet to be organized in this building, in this church, and in this city. There are spiritual giftings that are at your disposal. There are are spiritual giftings that are at your availability. You have to still keep climbing. You have to still keep pressing. You have to still keep moving higher and higher and higher. There is greater unity that is still yet to be reached. 
There's greater unity that is still a little higher. We have to keep believing. We have to keep believing. We have to keep trusting. All things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible to him, to those that are in unity. All things are possible. The greatest harvest that we have yet to see is higher. Is higher. Is higher. Why? He's promised us. He's promised us. So keep climbing. Keep climbing. For there is a danger in settling for false peaks. Will you pray with me right now? Father, right now, by the authority of the word of God and by the power that is in the name of Jesus, by your blood that was shed upon Calvary for our sin and for our transgressions, for our healing. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I invoke your spirit to reign supreme. We call down your name. We call down the name of of the Lord we call down Jehovah God we call down your spirits upon us Lord I pray right now in Jesus name that our minds be transformed God I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we have a revival of the spirits of our minds we have a revival of our human spirits that we not be conformed to this world but we are transformed by the renewing of your mind that we believe and understand and not just read on a circle or on a Bible study. We don't just read that all things are possible, but we understand that all things are possible to them that believe. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we fully embrace that you are pressing us, that we fully embrace that you are moving us, that we fully embrace that even in the midst of a holiday season, that there is work to do. Even in the midst of a holiday season that you are going to take us higher. You are going to take us further and that we are willing to go higher. Who will endure this morning? Who will press this morning? Who will go? Who will say? Who will say that I can go higher, God? Who will believe with me? Who will believe with me? that we have more to do who will believe with me that I I have put limits on myself Father in the name of Jesus come on that's it come on I want you to really allow the spirit of God to move in your heart and in your mind right now Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our hearts and our minds. Let your faith begin to rise right now. Let your faith begin to rise right now. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're doing. In the name of Jesus, transform our minds this morning. Transform the way that we think this morning transform and pull us out of our comfort zone this morning. <laughs>